so much for joining The Road Less Traveled. Thank um, you. It's a series of conversations where we speak to people like you whose journeys have been so inspiring. And through this journey and sharing of the story, we hope to inspire many, many more people, if not to become entrepreneurs, to be at least entrepreneurial. And, you know, right from the first time when we met, when you came to a game convening, and then you were part of our series 60 Days, 60 Voices, I've been waiting to have this conversation, an entire conversation about your story. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. So, thank you so much for inviting. Yeah. Harish, I want to take you back like I take all my guests back. And let's meet Harish at age 10. Was Harish at 10, I, you're taking me back in time. I'm meeting Harish at 10 for the first time. Would I have met an entrepreneurial kid, a confident kid, a risk-taking kid? Oh, it's an evolution. Take me back. If you're talking of an age 10, I, I guess it would have been a, uh, a kid who, who I, I mean, that was an interesting uh, age that you talk about because that year, frankly speaking, I, I failed in all the subjects and uh, and the teacher because i was born and brought up in raurkila and uh, and we are kannadiga so who, who are my parents who went from karnataka with oriya but so at heart i feel i'm a oriyaite and so my parents speak kannada mm. so there was one kannada teacher in the school because you have a very small kannada population in in bangalore there were only 20 families in raurkila mm. and one of them happened to be a teacher and because of her, I got conditional promotion three row, three years in a in a row, saying wow. if you don't de- do well next year, he will be demoted. And so my mother would beg, beg, and then say that no, no, passing me will do. But it was uh, it was never Hindi, English, mathematics, never science. I mean, it was like 25, 28. So it was a. I think that age I was like considered. Uh, I, I mean, I was like, yeah, it was no way. I mean, I used to come 34 out of 35. At least. But what I, was your state of mind? What did it? Okay. I mean, in a sense, I was like, for example, I, I mean, really, uh, Mila Mila. I mean, it was like, I mean, then you go back home and say to mother that report card Nia. And, uh, <laughs> and then you go out and play your cricket. So it was, yeah, cricket, cricket addiction of, of all, like, yeah, it would, it was, uh, studies was least of my priorities in many ways. So absolutely, absolutely not. Was there a change from Harish at 10 and let's meet him at, say, 16, 17, class 10? Yeah, class, I would say the, I also I mean, a lot of credit to a uh, couple of my benchmarks because, see, my height was, I mean, the way you had in classes was you stand according to your height and you're given seating according to your height right and, yeah. so, uh, and so my my the, the interesting was i was in the middle and two of my other uh, classmates uh, were the guys who would who were coming second and fourth in class mm. and we were get great friends over the life and they said was oh we will make sure that you you do study a bit and you come up and everything else and i think they were they were quite uh, what do you call it as uh, supportive and 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 great friends that uh, that uh, and then at least i i mean i think a teacher also made a difference that the way he taught um, say physics and mathematics in in ninth was very different to it and then uh, and then maybe in either 10th and especially in 11th 12th um, uh, that i would not get anything less than 100 in physics and math so um, so yeah, you right jumped from 34th to maybe fourth or fifth in class. So. You know, um, uh, when you speak of height, Harish, I remember I had a theory in school. I don't think I can quite prove it, but it was my theory from observing. And I always felt wrongly, of course, that the taller kids were not the smartest. And <laughs> I was somewhere in the middle. And I used to pray to God that I have to be first in line because i believed if you were first in line you became the smartest too so i don't know about becoming the smartest but by grade 10 i was definitely first in line <laughs> I was the yeah, yeah. so they say be careful what you ask for exactly no so yeah i mean that's that's a, yeah but the, in our class it was a little bit opposite the, the tall guys used to come first uh, but the issue and some of these guys would come second and fourth yeah when i think the combination of my benchmates and combination of um, the way i think one professor one teacher uh, taught it in a in a very different manner that uh, 
that that led to and and, and my interest in in physics and and, and maths went up uh, entrepreneurial no and school you know was still kind of i don't know if you're born and brought up in raudkela which is a mm. state township it's a very what do you call it as very i mean when you play and your you, your mother knows your marks before you come home and you when you are and when you are 11th 12th the the issue the, the the herd mentality saying that if you don't get into iit you're not a good student mm. um it's not because you're smart or it's, you don't get you like oh you have to and everything else so while you're playing cricket also the batsman would actually discuss with the wicket keeper about the problems and so it was so much of pressure right mm. uh, and i go boss I mean, even after you get into iit like are kaise 800 rank mil gaya aapka beta padhai nahi kiya kya are boss i mean it never never ends right so you did go down the iit route unfortunately you, you did start off on the road often traveled at that point i mean not often not everybody gets into iit but the aspiration at that age is whether it's yours or not that's at that education. at that point of time it was just picking up i mean if you look at the 86 right it was picking up at i mean yes the aspirations was picking up not it was it was very much concentrated i would say that point of time and there was between um, the steel cities like the bilai bokaro jamshedpur raukela durgapur mm-hmm. versus the big city schools like the bishop cottons the mm-hmm. um the, the 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 colleges the what is that muni um mitty by college in and and, and stain seven so it was concentrated to these schools and steel cities had a had a because it was concert steel was always like I, i still remember when there was a news in lorkela that the more pubs opening in bangalore and we were all celebrating now less competition from bangalore right <laughs> because they'd be so, occupied with other right people. exactly so <laughs> that is how strategy used to go what are the strategy so it was like steel i mean out of the 1500 or 2000 seats at that point of time the steel cities would pick up 400 to 500 seats mm. uh, so it was it was very lopped the steel cities jamshedpur or kelso we all all my classmates jamshedpur or kelso durgapur so it was there and now then it became a nation might phenomena later on like from starting of the kota happened much later and other cities started when, when did harish though starting ha- start having a okay we did the iit there's the steel city phenomena but when did you start emerging with your own voice of what you want to do want to do yeah see as that's what i was saying that it was rockela while i had great friends but it was still a very traditional conservative competitive sort right so mm-hmm. if you're not coming within the top 3 you are i mean nobody <coughs> would remember you or, hmm. or talk to you or whatever you talk to in the sense teachers and everything it didn't matter sense. so much in a it sense it did not at all at all that like you would you're not a so i was i mean i was like absolutely freaked out if somebody told me to speak speak to five people right hmm. and even when you're compulsory had uh, that you had to speak in front of the whole auditorium i still remember freaking out on that day in in the class 12th mm. i said boss and and somehow it i went up the stairs rushed up two sentences nervously and came back and i said it's not my cup of the public speaking uh, in any manner and and that's so because see i think it's the fear of criticism was too much in terms mm. of that one way or the other so and some of the students i mean so 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 but it was i would say iit kharagpur and especially staying uh, entering the nehru hall where the the dorm residence mm. and where i stayed for four years in that residence which was a complete so that's why when 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 a lot of my friends from school do not relate to the conversations of my friends from the hostel it was a demarcately to different different scenarios where because in the iit it was in the moment you entered you got into the hockey team and you got into the f- football team uh, of the hostel and then then got into debates of part of it and then got into the administration and completely got involved in the school administ- uh, the the ho- hostel administration the iit administration the everything uh, was was very different like while the uh, the the, the uh, by the way uh, it was the studies right so i i would make sure because i was involved in, in many activities one thing i would always do is i would never miss class mm. ever because i said i knew i did not have time to study and 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 so my only uh, uh, this one was to get 
concentrate in class and then then it would be either the hostel management and food uh, the, the the drugs the ragging uh, this one uh, how do you actually um, navigate all of that all that yes yeah. and, and then, now as i gone into final year is how do you uh, how do you, i mean in the second year I got involved in like my uh, uh, existing president uh, who was the president with them talked about uh how, i've not talked about looking at how do you actually clean up the at uh, uh, that time a little bit of the it on the on the drug side and then finally how do you actually make sure that when you're president when you don't off of the hostel that you make sure that ragging does not happen and how do you protect the first year kids etc etc so but also the whole budget management of the hostel so yeah. it was so i would say that that took over my life completely and that teaches a few skills entrepreneurial skills budget management is key in that sense right yes yes absolutely one is budget management but also also the 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 quirks of different people mm -hmm. like for example absolutely. when you're in so I, I don't know the hostel life was kind of uh, the way the iits were structured the hostels were structured was that every hostel had 50 first years 50 second years 50 third years and 50 fourth years mm -hmm. right so you always go up like uh like so every six hostels were divided into every hostel has 50 first years 50 mm -hmm. second years third year so you you stay in the hostel and go up right yeah so then when you are finally when you're the hobby you're also responsible for the room distribution of the first years you enter right so yeah. normally the parents would come so that no oh, my my this son and his son were in hyderabad together uh, could you make sure that they're next door so i will make sure that they're right exactly opposite in the hostel right very for any request for next door neighbor would be punished like okay you're in other part of the hostel that guy is in the other part of the hostel you're not here so and then i i used to tell the parents so we are we are in a hostel and we're not running a hotel number one and and uh, and in 24 hours we say that please leave uh, the hostel we will take care of your son or sons for example so you right? learn a few skills it's right it's been an right. interesting experience then you get into, uh, for example, uh, I was also part of the kind of the disciplinary committee where you had four, six professor and two students. Mm -hmm. So you you have a student representation in the disciplinary committee. So I go through this uh, ragging cases, or you go go through these cheating cases, for mm -hmm. example, right? And whether to rusticate the student, not to rusticate the student. So you're supposed to represent the students, and before that, the student the, who is who's going to be on the chopping block will spend. Uh, hours with me before and tell his point of view or her point of view if it's a girl and then whether you're making or sometimes i have actually put it put my decision against the student um and said no and that cheating was absolutely not ethical and you're giving a wrong notion everything also yeah harish let's jump to this experience to your early career choices what were you thinking post iit when you were thinking about what next? No, no, IIT itself, for example, like in the third year, I got interested in solar because I was in energy, but somehow solar uh, is what I started to look at. I mean, the love for thermodynamics and maths and started to look at deeper into solar. And that's when, when in the fourth year, again, a little bit of a herd mentality, I would say, yeah, you you decide between whether, um, whether you talk about uh, administrative service or you talk about um, about it at that point of time then said no i really wanted to get into um, get into what you call it as um, looking at large solar and so got deeper into it and uh, started to apply but what I used to happen was that there were only two universities in the world at that point in in the us who was who was looking at in the remote part you're talking of 1990 mm -hmm. right a sense of sustainability so applied and saying okay 32 go? years ago yes and saying that who are who is looking at sustainability who is actually looking at uh, uh sustainability in a manner that hopefully i mean I was, see i had read about the iran crisis of oil in the 1970s and hmm. and looking at the future oil needs for india as a country and everything else so solar was making sense but people said so even to I mean, India had zero capacity. China was nowhere in the scene, zero, right? Zip in terms of solar. And then even when I came to the US, I mean, they were like so small. Cells. I mean, what we, what the world's total capacity of solar in 1990 is what today the world does it in half an hour. 
were you uh -huh. sorry before you go because it's so interesting at that point were you interested in the problem itself or the unaddressed uh, need it represented i would i would say was uh, is more about uh, the uh, the the not on the unaddressed in terms of electrification per se was not there you had mm -hmm. you had you had known that so many people do not have energy but it was more about where will the future energy for all the population would come from Mm. Right, and saying that how much of oil, and we had no oil reserves, and we knew at that point of time through my classes the modeling of coal reserves mm. were not not there, and and where else India is going to? Then there was a notion of nuclear, and I'd studied nuclear a little bit here and later in masters, saying that that's not a storage issue. And then eighty six or as in second second year was it the Cherbon Chernobyl happened, mm -hmm. and and said that how do you start looking at at, at solar yes it was more both a combination of both what you just asked and and, and then but had no clue i said it's not boss okay then you you read about large coal plants and then you start imagining solar in the same same scale and said that okay how do we look at large solar together that will actually compete with large grid so decentralized thought process came in much 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 later but well, not much later but later but where no, no in 91 it was one year later i would say because uh the us uh, um, when i went came to the us and university of massachusetts and that time it was called university of lowell mm -hmm. uh, and had one department called uh, department of center for uh center for sustainable energy csc way back in 1990 and, and hats off to, to these two professor professor jose martin and professor bilberg Mm. And and so we and also incidentally got into a house where you share with six other people and and all of my other five guys were um, kind of hippies of of uh, all from solar and then every room had a complete list of 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 companies that you cannot buy stuff common groceries for so no coke no this because coke at that point of time sold in South Africa which was apartheid. Yeah. Um, so it was the whole you couldn't buy Exxon. So nobody had cars. Everybody had cycles, and so that was the nine. Um, that was my roommates, right? And you every the, you were the right man in the right place. Always. I was. I was. No, I was like I didn't realize that companies were unethical, right? These yeah. guys taught me, right? What was that? Yeah. I was like solar. What the India India No, no, you can't do this. We can't do this. We can't buy this because this is why by this corporate, that corporate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and then you get into the, the lot of, and the good part of having with five, six guys of solar in the house was that it's 24 seven, you talk about solar and, mm -hmm. and, and nothing existed. Even to buy a small solar cell, you had to drive somewhere and some guy in a backyard had done some small two, three solar cells, right? And so it was, it was a prehistory. And then for, and then what happened in 1991, Professor Martin said, uh, uh, there's a friend of his who was doing solar in Dominican Republic. Mm. Why don't you go there and see for some time what it is and is that and just before between mid of masters and then was thinking whether I should do a PhD or not. Mm. So then that's when I went to DR and I think that trip completely transformed my thought process when I met Richard Hansen, uh, who's a very, very dear friend of mine now, who was actually went to Dominican Republic in 1985. Mm. to push for solar in in dominic he's a he's a white suburban kid born in connecticut from a very very rich family who decided to give up anything and and went to dominican republic um, and and what and then in there i saw 10 very poor households having solar and actually paying for it and this was in 91 mm. and i said and that time if you look at the markets were mostly the ltt the palestinians the saddam hussein because they they were the markets for solar because how do you how do you get if somebody bombed the palaces yeah, or the it's almost a survival thing right at that point. yeah and 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 how they bought and that point of time and very few i mean the whole overall in capacity in the world at combined was eight megawatt which today we do in half an hour 45 minutes right and so then i came back and told my my my, my, my professor saying that man in this large solar i don't think so it makes sense fascinated i think this may make sense more sense in a decent in a fashion in india but i i told professor like yeah 
you are telling me to get into mechanical engineering for phd but i don't think so technology is the issue mm. and uh, and i really want to get back to in india or anywhere i don't want to write a phd that i have not felt i mean frankly speaking my parents had, didn't have to pay electricity bill because they were in steel authority of india limited or uh, iit was completely subsidized i came on uh, scholarship money to the us what was it about? I mean, it's all, a, I'm basically a product of subsidy sitting here, right? And I'm going to write about something that I have not felt. Mm. And then it was, and one I requested, Jose Martin was one thing, I might do a, a PhD, which is absolutely not going to be technical. Mm. He stood his ground and, and Professor Duffy stood their ground, told the mechanical engineer that his PhD will be socioeconomics. A lot of opposition they got that, how can we actually get a PhD done, which is not technical in a technical department. Mm. But, but they stood, they stood, and that's how actually it happened. Both Professor Duffy was known and Professor Jose Martin. So in and, a way, your conviction translated to them being, having that conviction in you and your ability to take this forward, right? Absolutely, and they, and they did a lot more than that, in fact. And when, uh, uh, when, uh, when I spent some time in India, I went back, and I, I still remember, um, so there it was, when, uh, when it was a draft paper that I said that this is what could work in India, maybe the costs are different. And then, then Professor Martin, who, who who came from Cuba, right? He was a Cuba and his, his parents had a, were shot while trying to escape from Cuba, et cetera. And he had a traumatic child effort. So he, he, he rest of his life, he was a professor who said, I would like to come to India. Mm. And with this paper, which we wrote the first paper from, uh, from Bella Vista to from India, six orders of magnitude. Bella Vista is where the first systems by Richard Hansen in Dominican Republic. Mm. And to India, were the six orders of magnitude. Would it work and would solar make sense in a country like ours? And I, I firmly believed it. Then we wrote the paper uh, and then presented it. And then, and then what happened was the first thing that we presented to at Indian Institute of Science. Mm. Okay, that was your first big test or your barrier. In and country. yeah, and uh, my, my professor was sitting to myself sitting in the professor's here. Mm. And then he, he saw the first page and actually threw the paper across to both of us and said, don't come from America and teach us what to do. Wow. Right? And I said, what do you mean America? He's Cuban, he really wants to do that, right? And then no, 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 these costs don't make sense and there's a poor country and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. It was such a depressing that my, my professor had come, this was the first, at the academy so he was like he had fought for me like in a sense that in the car he cried so much going back to the hotel he said there's a youngster who wants to do something and this is how they treat this was absolutely he cried and cried actually it was so and no then he said don't then we went to how, did, how did you feel he was emotional how did you feel i said he yeah I mean, was it was, it was, yes, you felt bad and said, what was wrong? It was bad. I said, I was more the time and telling him, no, let's see. I mean, it's a, yeah, I mean, so you train, okay, maybe this is how it works. Or maybe you sometimes, and then, but no, and I was still conviction, but was, they have not done it. How are they saying? No, but any, it, in the charm, like trying to soothe him, I went to Delhi. Mm. Went to IIT Delhi. Absolutely worst reaction. These costs are horrible, don't make sense. So it's worse than your first reaction also. Yes. And, and my, my uh, professor said, I mean, that it was right, really worse. And by that time, my professor a little bit harder, right? In a sense that, huh, if this is a reaction, he said, boss, show it to them. Hmm. That's all he said, show it to them. Hmm. And uh, so in, uh, in 2011, when the Maxis happened, he said, could you go and tell them? <laughs> yeah. I said, no, why? I mean, why? No, I, he said, you, if they haven't, I mean, it, they didn't I, have the vision you had. But I'm, you know, uh, I'm not naive. I think a lot of times visionaries are ahead of the curve, but the absolute resistance to me sounds surprising. I mean, oh yeah, IIC and IIT were really horrible. In the, even when I now go and come and speak IIC, I said. I tell to professors right now because I do I do use my uh, position and opportunity, saying that don't discredit kids. Yeah, absolutely. Because have you done it? Have you done it? 
yeah. right? You have not done it, right? Then what are you trying to say? It can't happen. Then I say also saying that where is your forty million dollars that you spent for cook stoves? Not a single cook stove has gone out, yeah. right? So let's not even to I, I, I even go to IIT whether it's Chennai, Madras, or Kharagpur. I said, boss, well, we need to accept failures, and if a, if a guy, you can just advise that these are the potholes, yeah. provided you have seen the potholes. Absolutely. And uh, and some of the professors don't like what I said. I said was no, because the issue is then, and also like for example in VCs when I or I I am for for a convocation, I I don't lose my opportunity at all. Not because of the my, I don't lose my opportunity. For example, when I when I told the VC of Agri Department, how come how come some like Hari Hari who speaks English who went to IIT and he one does anything stupid anywhere will get an honorary degree, mm -hmm. right? You awarded honorary degree to this fellow, that fellow. How come none of the farmers in our country have ever got an honorary degree? Yeah. How come if agri university, not a single agri university in our country has given any farmer who has logged it out for rice, paddy, millet, etc., never an honorary degree? X person does 40 years in IT, honorary degree. X person in politics, honorary degree. Why don't farmers get it? Right? So the question is that it's about, and telling to the youngsters like, boss, you challenge. First is don't listen to your parents. And don't listen to your, uh, your pro If you think you are okay, try it. If you fail, great. They'll all take the advice as the tools. Uh, Harish, and I want to stop you there because what you're saying is very, very important, but I want to pause. Okay. Right. What you're saying to young people today is, is, is a remarkable point and, and what young people want to hear. But I want to talk about you and use that example right. of, okay, IICE, IIC, your IIT, conversations haven't gone well. You still believe in this vision. What is it that keeps you going? I want the youngsters of today to relate to that because there's one thing to say, keep, hold on and believe, but what kept you going at that? Because your the first reactions were harsh, right? So the question is, so, so no, I tell the same answers that uh, if you're not frustrated, you'll never be motivated, hmm. right? Why are you frustrated? Because there is a lingering problem that you're not able to solve, right? And and what is the goal is to solve that problem. Go and everything else is noise, right? In many ways, right? Is any advice part of that solution of the problem? And it's going to make you go forward. Is it going to make you forward of taking a decision? The, the, the solution for the problem is wrong. But a lot of time is a sense that advice that you get is you are not the person to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you need to bifurcate, right? Between Separate that two parts. And a lot of the youngsters confuse between those two parts, right? As if a lot of people saying because they have not traveled and especially way we are brought up no it says i keep saying that when a girl comes back home saying that i've got 95 out of 100 the first thing people ask is why did you lose your five marks right yeah. or your cousin got 96 and the same thing goes up in forces may your cousin is getting one lakh two thousand you're getting ninety eight thousand right not if, celebrating if, your unique journey and what you have to take forward it's always about the other person, not about you, right? It's unfortunate. So you got to, okay, are you are you very clear that, are you on your path or are you creating a path to make sure that that problem is getting solved? So when people ask me question like, sir, what about corruption? I said, that's an excuse for you not to solve the problem. So what about parents? Again, that's an excuse, hmm. right? I can understand in certain conditions where financially per you'll have to take a responsibility. That's on it. But anywhere else, I see a lot of the youngsters and was, is it an excuse that you won't, don't want to go to, or do you want to jump into the well and try what it is? There are some other very strong things that prevent you from doing. That is something that I cannot, because I might not be in that position where it's too much of overbearing, very less food at home. And I need to become, I need to earn so that everything else that's separated. But in many of the other positions, the very fact that you are in this college or in this place, that you are able to ask this question, you should be able to manage three, four well, things. You've been together. given some sort of platform. There are people right. who don't have right. anything. I'm telling the youngsters, boss, everything, it's a two, one is separated out. And also everything that you some somebody says you can't do or this is not possible, is it an excuse 
or is it actually helping you move forward? It can't be done is also an answer of how do I go forward? Not about stopping. Like it can't be done this way, right? Mm. But it can be done 10 other ways. Like, okay, I, my train is stopped because there is a, there is a boulder on the railway state, on the railway platform, on the, on the tracks. Yeah. Is it, you can't go to Delhi. I can't go to Delhi by train, but I can hop out, take a bus. I can go to Delhi, right? I think this is where people need to bifurcate and, and, and move forward. Harish, you had, you know, we'll jump into Selco itself, this journey. Uh, was there a time more than any other where you said, this is just too tough? I, I simply can't. No, no. Almost gave up. Never. 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 Uh, that never, ever actually uh, came up. Kibas, uh, uh, it was a. That See, wasn't question, an option. Like you said, if this didn't work, there were 10 other ways, but you were going to get it done. Yeah, that's how you get it done. Because it, so the thing is that you, my, my point was like, boss, if, if that's what, if they, even the youngsters who come to, sir, both overworked, right? Mm. I said, hey, boss, kitna bhi bus full hai. Mm. How long? The conductor gets in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I'll tell you, I'll give you a piece. I tell them, I'll give a piece of paper to you. Go to 20 street vendors. Mm -hmm. If one of them says that I'm overworked, mm -hmm. you are one, they're going to have Okay. Right? Yeah. How at nine o'clock in the night, both husband and wife are taking a thela, going back, tired. Are they saying, what type of break do I need on a Sunday? Do I see movie tomorrow? How do I relax? Boss, what are we? We have become more as a human being, become so inefficient, mm -hmm. right? Completely inefficient and coming with its semantics that work-life balance and overworked and this and that. Boss. How many how many millennials do you have working with you, Harish? <laughs> because my average age fun. of Selco Foundation is 29. Okay. And I'm telling you, my colleagues who are 31. Ha, and who, who take her now with me for 12 years okay mm. and they have taken sabbatical friend did masters in mit came back ls in Madrid. they they are the guys who have actually now put the benchmark like for example we say people say oh, saturday chutti nahi hai. okay the day the poor get sunday holiday saturday chutti will like, right and also interview process mein ho jata, so you it's all in the interview process these are salary levels this is our, our chutti pattern this is work life balance to chodo it will like a saturday meeting or sunday meeting hota work life for us is yes it's balance this is life and ghar pe jane ke baad kaam hota so what is it we are life work okay how how you want to do it and it is pretty much told during the interview process in no no different words and this they, is what it takes to be a selco member or a person who belongs to this family that's what you Yes, I think that if you come here and don't come here to enhance your LinkedIn profile or resumes, hmm. it's not. Then you are then you are doing injustice to another kid who could have done much better than you. Because here you are on just like the independence revolution, the industrial. This is a revolution of sorts that you need to happen, and and it takes it takes. And if you are truly looking at the linkage between climate, um, poverty as well as sustainability. There is no set path and you don't know what the solutions are. So you're very adaptable, what changes next. And so as I keep saying that every day, and these are my colleagues who actually say every day that we have slipped by 5%, that means eight other families have to go undergo poverty for another day. Wow. Right? Wow. So there is a benchmark. It's not about your salaries. There is somebody not, because we delayed a service of a solar system, like this is this is what you learn. One one where we delayed a salute for a, for a day, and our our benchmark was in Selco was we provide service within twenty four hours. This lady called me up and said, "Great, when I did ten o'clock in the morning, I, my sewing machine stopped working. You, I complained, and within twenty four hours they came and gave a service. Mm. But you know what happened? You know you need to change your pattern. Twenty four hour service great for a TV." I did not make 150 rupees that day because your service was uh, your system was not working. According to you, the system you provided the service that day I could not buy buy, uh, buy dal for my kids. Wow! If she had kicked me in the stomach, it would have been better. Mm. 
how, what are we dealing with? I said, boss, the consequences of us being inefficient or consequences of us, we will all get our salaries. Yeah. But that's the person's livelihood. Right. Yeah. And I said, that's all the time. I mean, get anybody. So that's why we don't take, yeah, I don't care if somebody's a, and um, good part of my colleagues push for, oh, boss, PhD ka lena hai kya because of, <laughs> Harish, what's that one trait? And I, you know, it may sound like a trivial question, but I really do want to know. What's that one trait you think that you have that's held you in good stead? That one thing. Uh, see, the question is, I, I, I think so, you know, that the pressure, uh, <laughs> the only thing I credit, I mean, I, I give, I, 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 no, Rorkila was, was born, I give a lot to Rorkila and, it, and its surroundings per se, and, and IT was there. But I, I, I think to, while studying for IT, the one thing, you know, you're like, you're disturbed, you get up in the morning because you couldn't solve that problem at, and you get up at three o'clock, right? And say, was, I need to solve that, it keeps bugging you, right? And it keeps bugging you. And, and unfortunately, or fortunately, and what happens that even after 27 years, right, you think you've seen it, right? Mm. Boss, nothing, yeah, nothing, right? In a sense, nothing. You get a problem that comes to you, problem from Mizoram or from rural Karnataka, where you learn, boss. So where... It's almost like a kida in you. You yeah. just have to go oh, on and huh. on and on. And... Right. And, hey, boss, hey, hey, kaisa ho sakta, yaar? I mean, for example, suddenly your call comes in because we put up solar in hubli slums okay this was two, i'm just an example two three years ago where we put up the system for a day and what happens is um uh, then then we showcase to the slum dwellers and, and we remove the system the next day and then they, the, the, then we take the 10 people to the bank and provide and make sure that the bank provides loan and then you put up the system right so a phone call at right once like we are removing the system this kid the girl comes from school okay in a whatever the school uniforms in this and right mm. and she suddenly starts rolling on the floor bolaki solar light mat nikalo because i have to become a doctor mm. now it hits you in multiple ways the question is it's not about taking the light off the system is again she will never become a doctor she will become another maid servant mm. nine and a half out of ten times right it's not about light. What is the other ecosystem? What is, look at the aspiration of that eight-year-old kid. Mm. What do you, you feel so bloody helpless, mm. right? In a sense, or when two women came once long time ago and said, it's raining so heavily. And because of which we only have two saris at home. We, we hear that you guys solve problems, uh, which is a, like a scary statement that people make on us. Uh, two, two, two saris, which because of it's raining, it doesn't get dried. Because it doesn't get dried, the, the, the sari smells and because of which our husbands cheat on us. And both of them collapsed and saying, please save our marriages. Hmm. No Google search will help you come up with this soul problem. There's no problem statement is not articulated in Google. What, where is your PhD? Where is your internet? The same thing in, in Rajasthan, lack of water leading to uh, collapse of mar marriages because yeah, the question is, okay, huh? where, I mean, then you're looking at kya kar rahe hum like that frustration needs to happen, boss, but you need to solve it, right? You solve it, you push, 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 push. And that keeps you going. I mean, it, it and that's where if some of the youngsters who are passionate are able to sustain that in terms of boss karna hai. Yes. Having a purpose and having the tenacity to just to do, do what that. it takes. Yeah. Right? It's so easy. I said, I don't have time, boss. There are kitsch pitch kile kisi or bolda road. So just say, Otana ki, the biggest challenge I find and I'm telling to the youngsters here is when the youngsters, some of the youngsters come in, the parents are the problem. And and when they come and Harish, social organization, they should do after 60, you know. And uh, then I closed the door to one of the family, my father, I said, how was the traffic? Oh, traffic was really bad. The portals, you know, Bangalore. Then I said, that's the problem. You want Mahatma Gandhi to be born in neighbor's house or not your house? You don't want son to solve these problems, right? It is somebody else. Your son will go to New York, right? And then my son will earn money. Then he knew that, that he had fallen into my trap, right? This question is, 
where when do you want your son to problem so do you have the right to complain if you don't have a solution and people say water is leaking in the roads i what the heck yaar yeah, road i said give me five solutions i will go to the bangalore commissioner yeah. i will go to them don't say that they are not able to solve if you were the bangalore commissioner also you would be the same issue look at oi to bangalore is officers were people only come with complain about the moment i tell you do you have a solution oh we don't have uh wait uh <laughs> of the time right yeah so i said that's where how do you push these guys to be solution providers and all, and what you're saying is also what gandhi ji said right you be the change don't wait yeah and 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 you can humse kya ho sakta are bahut kuch ho sakta humse e e na that is a is that an excuse or reality yeah. right no. and then people say maine try kiya i asked the politic why did you ask the politician yeah. why was that the may why why you directly go to the high level there are a lot of things you can do and lot of things you can do much better rather than is like kabhi kabhi you know the csr vsr oh i did this csr i did a bull yaar i mean in the sense that if if a large company with that csr is not able to move the needle and you are happy with the 10 photographs in an annual report i'm no please don't do csr it is better if you don't do csr so find your purpose and be tenacious about it is what i'm going yeah. to round off this part and it's so powerful harish so I, i i feel inadequate to ask you more questions but because i think you've articulated all of that so well i do want to because it's the nature of this conversation and at the cost of saying work life balance we won't put it there <laughs> but a few light hearted questions um is there someone who's inspired you in your journey more see the tuition is you day in and day out you know when you when when you wrote about when people talk about social enterprises or you talk about starbucks or you talk about uber right i i tell the kids right but if, how does a street vendor in the morning gets up takes the worst interest money lenders interest buy the vegetables according to which part of bangalore she goes in the evening at 8 o'clock she has no refrigerator at home so her pricing strategy has to change and irrespective of that she is has to make pay 50 rupees to the thela fill of back 1000 rupees has enough money to feed her three kids and you hardly ever hear that the street vendor has gone out of business right how and isn't that an aspirational story that how are they making it sustainable end to end one way or the other while the larger not largest not for profit in the world which i call uber everybody celebrates uber ola which are actually and flipkart which got sold to walmart are all loss making organizations and here you have this lady who's figured out a way to do it every day and do it where she wins and you will never talk about her journey as a case study because it's not sexy enough to be written in a resume and you think of a pani puri vendor who's going down the uh, hill and the stove is there she has to balance all her pani puri and the stove and we can innovate any apple apple app, app on an ipad and we can do anything we are not able to do any innovation of a cart that goes down right you see that on a daily basis yeah so Whoa. your your yeah. inspiration is the common hero that we have not taken the time out to celebrate i, I mean everybody every day they teach you something and that's that's like ha boss ek kaise solve karta hai yaar wo log and and a simple thing like simple thing she said light हरीश भाई पहले लॉस में हरीश भाई लाइट मैं पानीपुरी वेंडर है ना मैं लाइट ऐसा लगाओ कि उसको दिखाई जाए मैं क्या दे रहा हूँ ये मेरा डर्टी वेजल्स के ऊपर लाइट नहीं गिरना चाहिए आपका लाइट ये पाथवे में व्हाट शी इज टेलिंग इज माय डिजाइन ऑफ द लाइट शुड बी सच वे इट बी दिस वेर कैन और बनाना वेंडर मेरे को यहाँ बैंगलोर एंड सर नंगे डोंट गिव मी व्हाइट लाइट इन अ व्हाइट लाइट माई बनाना एंड पोटेटो स्पॉट आर मोर प्रोमिनेंट गिव मी येलो लाइट where was where do i see that yeah is there a book that's taught you something more than any other uh, yes i think the i uh, the what i keep referring to i don't know whether the kids read asterix and obelix mm mm-hmm. if you look at asterix and obelix the gaul village mm mm-hmm. is a more sustainable village you have one fishmonger you have one singer you have one hammer uh, the the blacksmith you have enough that you go to the forest and get and buy it and come back it's a self sustained village in many ways and that is how does that oblix uh, how oblix asterix the cacophonics and the druid 
will and and then there's no this one no there's no competition of that any sort the competition who is stronger but not in terms of wealth yeah. harish i'm going to end with a question about you know I, i usually ask people what their favorite holiday destination but i'm going to change it a little bit for you i know you you're in bangalore because that's where the hub is but i also know what you do takes you all over india and everywhere is there a place you've discovered and said you know i could just be here forever is there one little place somewhere that you said some day i'll run uh out. yes i i think it's multiple wherever uh wherever i get a set of people who are able to discuss mm. and and other but also also like I mean, I had, the simplicity I had a and the beauty of a place hasn't just. It's more about 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 where, where you can actually discuss and say, "Boss, let's do a solution." Like Izol. I mean, frankly speaking, it's been new on my head. Mm -hmm. How did they? How have they? Have they mapped out Hornless City, mm -hmm. right? And it's a Hornless City, fantastic discipline. Eighty percent of the shops owned by women. It's not that I want to sell. I I really want to. settle down for some time see how they have solved it and go to a, the the worst case scenario place and say how actually it can be I it can be i can't even begin to imagine a homeless city but that's amazing right it it is it is what uh, it, 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 it's 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 yeah it's it's a homeless city and and all the scooters are on one line and the cars are on one line is small road yeah i i think on on that amazingly beautiful vision it's a good end to our lovely conversation harish uh -huh. uh, you know just more power to your purpose just speaking to you these 50 minutes and thinking of other things i should double down on so thank you so much for taking the time out thank you thank you thank you so much